Good evening. Hello. Uh, welcome to Tarot Tuesdays with moi, Julie. And I am here to read the cards, talk about skincare, talk about all kinds of stuff, whatever you are interested in. So um, I will be with you for the next half hour and we'll do some discussion of tarot, pull some cards and see what we have in store for this week. So um, it is August 14th. Um, and we are almost out of the Mercury retrograde. I think a few more days, maybe, uh, maybe like four more days. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but, um, I mentioned before, even though I'm not uh, a professional astrologer or anything like that, I'm not, um, as in tuned into astrology as I am into tarot. I do look at and think about astrology and read a little bit about it trying to grow a little bit more interest in it. And the Mercury retrograde season is something that um, I think a lot of people, even those who may not be as into astrology and sort of know about um, the Mercury retrograde is something that happens a few times a year. And whenever Mercury is in retrograde, um, we often find that um, communications are disrupted and, um, our technology seems out of whack and you know maybe your phone crashes or your computer crashes or you need to back up your data or you just have trouble writing or speaking or, or getting your message out and it can be really really um, annoying so that's what's going on that's sometimes what goes on in mercury retrograde but i'm here to tell you that it's almost done uh, a few more days so whew, i'm feeling that right now i don't know if you guys are but it's definitely kind of a struggle. Today I was having some issues with uh, the website at my job and I'm, I was getting these emails from my supervisor like, saying, oh no, this is broken and this is broken too. I'm so sorry, this is broken too. We have to fix it before we send out the newsletter. And I was like, oh God. So I'll be doing a little bit more work on that tonight. Thanks Mercury Retrograde, you're the best. Taking a swig of water from my brand new bottle, really like it. So I'm wondering who is with me tonight, if you're here, um, say hello, and um, let me know what you would like to talk about this Tuesday. Um, got my tarot altar set up back there. Um, while I was doing some cleaning this weekend, I found an amethyst crystal um, that I had, um, from quite some time ago. So I placed it there over on my little altar tarot table. Um, I used to be really into crystals, not as much anymore, but it is a pretty addition and it's nice to have sitting there. So it's nice, I think, to have a little space where you, you know, have your, your reflection and your spiritual stuff where you meditate in front of, and, and I have that. So that's pretty cool. So... I'm going to wait just a few more minutes to see if anyone else shows up. And we're in my hands right now. I have um, the Wild Unknown Tarot, which <clears throat> some of you may know. It's a really popular tarot deck right now. Um, and it's, uh, I think I mentioned before, it's very beautiful. It's got lots of um, pictures of... Um, animals and plants on it, so there's a lot of natural imagery on it. Hi, Leah. Hi, Sarah. Nice to see you both. Thanks for joining me. Um, and I had a, I confess that when I first got this um, tarot deck, I kind of had a hard time connecting with it, but I recently read cards for someone and I felt really connected to it for the very first time, so I'm really happy about that. Hi, Nancy. Nancy says, I have no idea what to do. It's wonder about my new friend. He makes me smile a lot. So, ah, okay, I see. Got some thoughts about some, some friends who make you smile, so to speak. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Seems like we're always having questions about relationships and love and stuff like that. Hi, Gab. Hi, everybody. Cool. 
So I think um, what I'll do this evening is like um, pull a card or two for some folks with specific questions. And then I'm going to pull a card for kind of that's going to be our like message for the week, just in general for everyone. Um, so let's get started with Nancy's question. Just wonder about my new friend. He makes us me smile a lot. Nancy, are you um, interested in like uh, uh, romantic sort of uh, relationship with this person? If that's the case, I can kind of look into that a little bit for you. Remember, tarot's for entertainment only. I have to say that. So uh, right now you can't really see because I'm just like here. I'm just, I'm kind of just shuffling the cards in my hands as I'm thinking and just kind of getting a set. I want to bite this man. Ooh, fancy. Ooh, was that a good bite? I'm assuming that's a good bite. But you know what? I I know what you mean. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Oh, go my. Well, all right. Every now and then, a card flies out of the deck like that just happened, and it's like a message. Hi, Darcy. All right. Okay. So, you know what? I think I'm going to start with the message for everyone, because I think the card that just flew out was the one that was like the message for the whole for our whole team, and then I'll get to your question, Nancy. But um, thank you, Darcy. Yeah, I, I was at work today, and um, this morning I did some sort of red eyeshadow. My lipstick's off, but yeah. I had my hair down, but I just like to put in these little, like, space buns, whatever, for this today. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> the first card that I have is just flew out of my deck. And bizarrely enough, I was thinking about this particular tarot card on my way home. So I'm thinking that this is significant. So I want to show you this card. And again, this is for everyone. This is like our like general message for this week. And I think this is really pertinent considering that it's Mercury retrograde right now. Okay. And this card that I pulled, and this is our message for everyone, is the Hanged Man. Okay. Um, the Hanged Man is a card that um, appears in the Major Arcana of the Tarot, which means that it's part of that section of the Tarot that has cards that we think of as, like, very significant. All the messages we get from the Tarot, you know, have significance, but I often think about the Major Arcana as being the cards that are, like, in capital letters message very important the hangman is an interesting card um as you can see in this deck it's represented by a bat he's hanging upside down um and he looks a little bit scary but he's a bat you know um bats i think are, are very misunderstood creatures <laughs> i'm not a huge fan of them flying at my head or anything but you know bats are interesting they hang upside down they have really infinite patience for kind of hanging where they are and that is what the hanged man represents um, the hanged man represents kind of a period of pausing and reflecting and often self-sacrifice, um, in order to obtain some kind of inner wisdom, some kind of outer wisdom in order to gather something. Um, oftentimes when we are trying to obtain some knowledge or obtain some wisdom or trying to kind of level up and move to the next stage in our lives. Um, there's a period of waiting. There's a period of where we just really want things to happen for us. But the universe says to us like, now you actually have to kind of hang out and wait and pause and um, kind of experience this moment of um, stasis. And the Hanged Man is a card that sort of shows that. Um, right now, like I mentioned before, we're in the Mercury Retrograde, which is a time when 
things can get really messy in terms of communication. Um, and the hanged man is kind of an interesting card to have come up during that because sometimes when we, there goes my dog, he's walking around behind me. Just consider him like a bonus part of this. Um, sometimes we have to wait in order to get to the next stage in our lives. Sometimes we have to enter slow periods of our lives or we have to wait for the right time to do things. And it's not always comfortable for us because we really want to get to that next stage. We really want to do the next thing. We really want to um, hit the next challenge, hit the next outcome, stuff like that. Um, and the hangman is here to tell you, I really know that you want to rush and advance to the next thing, but slow down. You got to slow down. There needs to be a moment where you pause and really look at the situation closely. Um, a lot of times astrologers will say that during a Mercury retrograde, you shouldn't do certain things. And that's up to you if you, if you want to believe that or not. But oftentimes when there is a Mercury retrograde, there is an opportunity to kind of slow down, not take any major actions until you've done a lot of thinking and a lot of reflecting. Hi, Renee. Hi, Foon. Yay. Hi. Good evening. Foon, Renee says, this is weird. I had a dream last night. There was a bat in my room. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe, the, maybe it was him. Maybe it was him visiting you with a message. So again, the message with the hanged man is you want to rush into something, you want to rush ahead, but maybe you need to pause and reflect, take more time than you think you need to pause, reflect, think through the entire situation instead of just barging right ahead. Um, the Mercury retrograde, I believe, is slated to end, um, I think, either Saturday or Sunday as I look at my calendar. So um, while we're still in that Mercury retrograde, I'm going to say that the message from the universe is for us to continue kind of dwelling in a moment of reflection, maybe not think about taking on any new big projects or entering into any new kind of like relationships or agreements or anything um, while the retrograde is happening. Now, if that doesn't apply to you, totally understand. Again, tarot is what you take it as and it's, um, you know, for entertainment purposes only, as we say, but the hangman invites you to be still with him in a position that requires concentration and contemplation. This kind of hanging upside down does that. And really think about where you are. Dwell in the space that you're in right now and see if any new insights and new reflections develop um, while we're kind of waiting out the last few days of the Mercury retrograde. So that's our message. I'm going to say that's our message from um, the tarot for this week, for all of us. If you have any questions about that, feel free. All right. So now I'm going to set Mr. Bat aside because I feel like he needs to kind of sit by himself. And I'm going to... Foon says, how does a retrograde work for breakups? That I'm not sure about. Um, I know that Mercury retrograde affects communication. I'm not, I'm not an astrologer. I'm just kind of, I just kind of know a little, like a tiny bit about astrology, but since Mercury retrograde can make communication kind of garbled and, and it's not as clear as it could be, it might not be the best thing to happen because there's usually a lot of talking during breakups. But yeah, I don't know. So, um, Nancy says the Mercury retrograde might explain a few things for me right now. I know it explains some things for me. So if any of this is resonating with you, I'm really happy about that. All right, I'm gonna pull like, let's say, let's see, I'm like 14 minutes in. I think I have time to pull like maybe one or two more cards. So I said I would pull one for Nancy, and so I'm gonna do that. And, oh, okay. All right, so. So before I get into that, Sarah says, does anyone else have a hard time following this very good advice to slow down, consider things, aspect of Mercury retrograde and contemplation of the hangman? I hate slowing down, especially when it seems like I need to do so the most. 
yes, Sarah, I get that. And I re it really hits me hard because I'm an Aries and I have learned that I really just, I'm running at everything full speed and very much struggle to slow down. I mean, sometimes I struggle to get enough sleep because my brain won't stop running. Um, you know, I don't always have tons of energy, but you know, I'm always kind of just barreling and barreling and it's a really, I have a really hard time slowing down, slowing my mind down, especially. Um, so yes, it is hard to follow that advice. Um, I think that it's a thing that takes practice. If you're very, um, if you are just kind of in a, a moment of your life where that is something that is your default. Um, and it's also really tough to do that in this world where we seem to be moving so fast and American culture seems to go very fast. Um, our, you know, we're just barreling through time trying to get as much profit out of this world as we can. That seems to be what's going on with capitalism. You know how it is. Um, we don't have time for ourselves. Everybody says they don't have time for themselves. They don't have time to slow down. But um, we have to kind of make time for that for that to happen. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we need to slow down everything. Um, I think just taking a few minutes maybe out of our day to like meditate maybe for five minutes or even like two minutes. Sometimes for, for me, five minutes is like, an eternity if I have to meditate. Um, but if you can kind of carve it out incrementally, yeah. Foon says, Julie, do a breathing exercise. Yes, I need to do that. Foon, that is really good advice. I try to do that sometimes when I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep. But All right. So on to the card I pulled for Nancy. Nancy is uh, wondering about a potential romantic thing. And so the card that I have hold with that is the ace of swords um which is a really interesting card to pull in a potential um romantic uh situation now the swords um in this deck are represented by snakes um and at least this card, this ace, has this sort of serpentine infinity symbol around it, which is kind of interesting. Nancy, I seem to remember you saying you wanted to bite this man. Maybe snaky bite. Um, <laughs> and the snakes aren't always bad. Snakes are very magical creatures, um, which is interesting. Um, so swords represent action. The element of swords, um, the face, the suit of swords represents action. They also represent the element of air. Um, so the ace of swords is a very active card. Um, and aces are kind of the beginnings of the, or they're not kind of, they actually are the beginnings of the suits. So whenever you see an ace appear in a rating or you pull an ace in response to a question, um, we're always talking about beginnings. And you said, you know, this friend of yours is new. So, yes, that seems to make sense that we would pull this ace. Um, it's kind of a moment where you have to make a choice. There's a new kind of possibility on the horizon here. And you have the ability to control the outcome of what you're doing. You have to remember that you're in control of your own destiny. So if in romantic relationships you sometimes feel like you lose control or anything like that, or, or you've been in relationships before, or you've been in situations before where um, you kind of let someone else maybe control your narrative, um, this is the time to not do that. You have a good opportunity to really take the reins, so to speak, and um, sort of dictate how this next um, how this next scenario encounter rendezvous if you will will go um, and this is a very bold card um, boldness of course is uh, an attribute of aces and an attribute of swords and of of, uh, of snakes so um, you have the 
um, energy and opportunity in your hand right now to really make a big impact with your actions. Um, this is like kind of a, like you're the one who makes the first move type of card. Um, the energies are kind of like pointing in your favor that that would be a good thing to do. I think that's what, um, I think that's what this card might be saying. So if you were never uh, the kind of person who made the first move, maybe it's time to make the first move. I think the sword is um, conveying that. I mean, when a sword's in your hand, you got power. So I've only ever had one other relationship. It doesn't really matter. Um, everything is kind of a new beginning. So sorry, Natalie. Sorry you're having connection issues. Must have been that Mercury retrograde. Urgh. It's almost over, though. So I think this card is saying, if you feel like making the first move, it looks like uh, the conditions might be favorable for that. New beginning, action. You know, destiny belongs to those bold enough to kind of seize it. So that's my kind of cliched interpretation of that card. Nancy says, woohoo, awesome. Cool. So again, tarot entertainment only, da da da. Um, but, uh, you know, if this card resonates with you and it kind of makes you feel powerful, you know, think about it. Think about swords. Think about um, the power that you've always had to control your destiny, but sometimes, you know, once we see a sign from another place, it actually makes it real for us. So, you are welcome. Thank you. All right. Okay. So I have a little more time. It's uh, 21.45 here. I'm going to try to end at 9.30 because I've got to do some other good stuff. I'm going to take a drink of water. So it's interesting. We had that first card come up that's about like pausing and not acting. And then the second card that came up that's all about like acting. It's kind of curious um, that, you know, we'd have these two very kind of opposing messages come up in the same uh, space, even though, you know, this one was kind of, I was kind of setting the intention that it was for all of us. And then the other one was kind of specific to a particular person listening today. So I don't know. I think that's kind of one of the kind of mysterious things about tarot is that sometimes you'll get things that seem opposed and, you know, those things will appear sort of in the same place and they both seem really intentional. Um, and I think that that's there to remind us that we're really the ones in control of what we do. Um, you know, there's not, in my philosophy, I should say about tarot cards, there's not really like any mystical, incredible power contained in these cards. Hate to break it to everyone. Um, these are just, you know, paper printed by a machine. Um, uh, the power comes from us and our ability to interpret symbols to sort of change our consciousness and help us tap into our inner wisdom. They don't really have any power or meaning unless we give that to them. And really it's all about how they are able to make us think and believe and behave in such a way that we grow closer to what we should always become, grow closer to our wisdom. Um, does that make sense? I don't know. Don says, always so insightful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe it's because of the mix in our audience. Does our energy sort of cross and affect the outcomes? I don't know. That's a good question. That's, very, that's a very metaphysical question. It's a very philosophical question. Um, and my, you know, and I am one tarot reader out of millions in this world. And um, I think that there are lots and lots of different ways to interpret that kind of phenomenon, what we had right here, um, where two cards that are kind of opposed kind of appear in the same space. Um, my interpretation is always like, well, sometimes the tarot will throw down these messages that are kind of kind of curious in order to remind us that really it's all about us and our power and how the cards help us focus our power. But someone else might have a totally different interpretation of that. 
like I said, I am one tarot reader among millions and millions in the world, and there are plenty of people who do not read this way. I'm very intuitive. Um, I My tarot reading is informed by my background as um, a person who studied a lot of literature and um, mythology and also someone who writes a lot and, you know, read a lot of poetry and, but also as a critical thinker and did a lot with studying the way that people interpret symbols just on an, in an academic context. So that's where it comes from for me. Um, but you could go to another tarot reader and they might pull these two cards, these same cards and they might give you like a totally different interpretation of why they came up. So that's the kind of interesting thing about it is that, Tarot is so individualistic, and it's very um, it's very individualistic, and it's very much dependent on each person's philosophy of the world and their background and everything. It's it's really, and I think that's the beauty of it. So there's always a start and an end, and sadly, an end and a start. Yes, that's very true. I believe that very true, and maybe that is. Hi, buddy. My dog just jumped up on my, my leg. Hi. Can, can you go over there with Dad for a little bit? All right. Um, I agree. Um, and in a pause, perhaps there's a sacred action. And in an action, perhaps there's a sacred pause. So, all right. Don, it's those, it's those Mercury retrograde gremlins. That's that's a movie that needs to be made. Retrograde Mercury Retrograde Gremlins. That's like the sequel to the real Gremlins movie. Did anyone remember Gremlins? It's been so long since I watched that movie. That's such a good movie. Remember what was the name of the little the good one? The little like plush one, Mogwai or something? I don't I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, um I think that I'm going to, let's see, what should I do for the remaining few minutes here? Um, I think I'm going to pull one more card and I'm going to say that this card is kind of for all of us as well, but it's kind of like our little, um, our little gift for the end of Mercury Retrograde because we made it through. It's like our little wish. So for the rest of Mercury Retrograde, you know, for the rest of this week, until the Mercury Retrograde ends, you know, we want to be thinking about that, the necessity of slowing down and pausing. And then at the end, once the Mercury Retrograde is over, what should we be thinking about that? Can't eat at night, gremlins. Yes, I. you, you shouldn't feed me at night either. I'll turn into a... Who knows what, but so this card, when Mercury retrograde ends, what should we be thinking about? What should our intention be? And this is really interesting that this card came up because this card came up for someone that I talked to recently. It's the five of cups, or I'm sorry, not the five of cups, sorry the eight of cups. Now this card is a card that looks quite negative um, from first glance. Um, and the fact that this card has appeared for me for like, um, uh, you know, in, in a few different uh, contexts, like really um, closely, uh, sort of temporarily, like this came up in a reading I did the other day, is sort of telling me that maybe you really need to pay attention to it. Um, but if you look at this card again, it looks really negative. We've got all these broken cups. We've got this sort of um, darkness that kind of blots out everything. It's like a mountain in front of us. And when this card came up um, for the other person I was reading for, we sort of talked about this feeling of being stuck and feeling like you only see this one thing in front of you. Um, and how that it can feel really 
really overwhelming and scary. Um, sometimes these negative cards do come up for us. And um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad news or that there's bad stuff in our future. But I think we can always kind of see and, and look at the cards that are negative and come, that come up as like a reflection of the situation and what we can do to make it better. So when this card came up in this other reading that I did, um, we kind of talked about it being like this person's perception of being stuck. Um, all of these kind of broken things at the bottom representing kind of broken hearts and broken emotions. And then this dark mountain being all that they can see and feeling stuck. Um, I think we've all been in moments like that where it just feels like we're stuck. We're broken hearted. We don't know how to go on. All we see in front of us is this obstacle or this, this darkness. Um, but you can see at the top here, that our path isn't completely blocked. The mountain doesn't reach on forever, it stops. And there is a possibility to climb over the top or fly over the top, you know, if we had wings. Um, so I think that if we're in difficult circumstances, as the Mercury retrograde kind of comes to an end, um, this is a reminder that though they may seem very overwhelming and sad and it's okay to be sad that we shouldn't get into such a place where we're feeling dragged down and we're feeling despair. Despair is not what, what we should ever allow ourselves to get into because there's um, always a way out. Even in the darkest places, there's a way out. Um, even when we see this massive mountain in front of us, um, it doesn't reach into the sky infinitely, blocking our path forever. Um, if we can climb over top of it, if we can fly over top of it, we can get out from in front of it. So, um, yeah. It's here to remind us that while the obstacles in our paths may be painful, um, while the difficult situations that we're facing may hurt and may seem insurmountable, there's always a way. There's always a way around it. This world that we live in right now, especially if you're uh, American and you're maybe seeing what's going on uh, in uh, our country right now, is real effing scary and just seems like constant rain of just horrors, horror after horror after horror upon us. And I admit that there have been times when I've been looking out at the world and I think, God, what are we going to do? You can't let yourself get into despair. There's always a way out. Um, thank you Foon, for agreeing with me. Um, there's always a way out of whatever painful situation we find ourselves in. If only for the reason that nothing is forever in this world. Everything is kind of temporary and temporal, and there's a joy in that. So, yes. Um, we're not going to be locked into an infinite, you know, um, uh, tyrannical moment of the orange horror. Um, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Um, He's a mortal being. Someday he will be gone. Um, and someday all his cronies will be gone. And, you know, this world will keep spinning. We'll survive. So that's the message I have for you. <clears throat> Think about taking that sacred pause with a hanged man. And even in the darkest moments that we see, in our lives, even in the moments where we feel stuck, when we feel like there's no way out, there's a way out. There's a way out. <sighs> Impermanence is fearful, but also hopeful. That's very true. Fun. All right. So 
I am going to wrap this up for now. Um, if you have questions about any of the stuff I talked about tonight, um, feel free to um, ping me or ask questions. I will be back on next Tuesday for more Tarot with Ya Girl. Um, if you have any questions before that Tuesday that you want me to talk about next Tuesday, please let me know. Um, in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, only a few more days left in that Mercury retrograde and we'll be done. Um, this time next week it'll be over and we'll be like, yay. So have a wonderful Tuesday. Love you. Mwah.